and you're watching Indie Music Reviewer. Terry Wilson is uh, one of our winners of the Indie Music Reviewers Contest for Women of Indie. Sarah deserves it for many different reasons. Go ahead and uh, first off, Sarah is a musician. Tell us what instrument you play. Uh, I'm a drummer and uh, I play in the bands Jack of Hearts and Odist. Great. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate that very much. Uh, tell us about the two different bands you play in. Uh, I'm in uh, Jack of Hearts, which is um, I guess what you would say would be influenced by Grizzly Bear, uh, Arcade Fire, um, kind of music like that. And then Otis is kind of more progressive, experimental, um, kind of more like Mars Volta kind of music. Yeah, so <laughs> you're drumming like a Mars Volta drummer. Y yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I've seen it before. If you guys oh, haven't yeah. seen it, we're going to go ahead and take a minute later today and uh, Sarah's going to play for us. You guys will see that and uh, see just how badass she is here. Uh, we are at the Earl today. Located where? Located in East Atlanta. East Atlanta. Why did we? Why did you pick East Atlanta? Uh, I love East Atlanta. Every time I hang out, I'm pretty much out here. Uh, the vibe out here is just great. It's uh, you can if you're looking for anything, you'll you'll find it here. So of East course, just, and of know. course the Earl here, badass place to see music. Oh, yeah. Make sure you check it out all the time. Oh, yeah. um, as we were saying here, Sarah, go ahead and tell us about the two different. Um, promotions and entertainment and booking companies that you're involved in here. Okay, uh, Tree Fingers Entertainment is my publicity, uh, booking and promotions company. Um, I book tours and I, I do publicity for, for different bands of, of, as well as my own. And um, prom put, put on shows uh, inside Atl in Atlanta and outside of Atlanta. And uh, Hijacking Music is the collective that I'm a part of. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean when Hijacking Music is a, a music collective of, um, we all just come together and put on shows and support each other and we offer resources to help other bands and yeah. Most recently you guys are sending a couple, well not a couple, a lot of artists to Atlanta. Go ahead and tell us about that. Thing. Sorry, a lot of artists to South by Southwest. Yes. Tell yeah. us about that. Um, yeah, we, uh, I, 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 um, for South by Southwest this year, I've never gone and I wanted to make sure that I was going to at least play one show. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to book my own showcase. And so I did. And um, it's good. it's the Hijacking Music uh, Atlanta Showcase. And we're bringing 11 bands. And uh, it's at Hole in the Wall in Austin, Texas. And uh, it's going to be great. I'm really, really excited about it. How did you get involved in booking? What, what and why? <laughs> Um, I guess ever since I was 18, I've, I've been playing in bands in Atlanta, and um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just I just figured, you know, someone's got to book shows, I, I, and then I just taught myself how to do it, and uh, eventually I just got better at it. And um, Otis was the first band that I actually booked tours for, so um, <clears throat> I lo there's a lot of trial and error, but you know, over the years, which I've been booking since I was 18, so I, I have it down now. And, um, I just really enjoy it. I'm really passionate about it. So. That's awesome. I, I love all the things that you do. Uh, it's definitely one, one of the reasons why we picked you as one of our women of India here. And we're very excited to have you here again. Uh, female drummers I see here. What other female drummers do you see here in Atlanta that you can give a shout outs to? Um, Stephanie from the Coat Hangers. Definitely. And, uh, Which, we tried to book them for the IMRI Music Festival. That okay, just did yeah. not work out. We would have loved to have them. But. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely a lot of fun. Um, as far as uh, in Atlanta, I'm not. I'm not really sure. I'm sure there. I'm sure there are other female drummers. Well, why did you uh, pick the drums? And what age did you start the drums? Uh, I started playing drums when I was 12, and um, I don't know. I, I I guess I'm I'm just the type of person that always I always have to have a hobby and be really good at it. So ever since I I, I used to be a gymnast, and then I quit that when I was 12. And um, I just connected with music. Um, my, my dad's a music lover, so I always grew up with that influence in my life. And um, 
And so, but at the age of 12, I started listening to Nirvana and Sublime, and I just connected with the drums and just been playing ever since. What was your first band like? And tell us about that experience. Um, my very first band, it was actually, I think that it was a band called Aura, actually. And it was with a really good guitar player and a really good bass player. And it's kind of funny because I'm now in a band that is called Otis with really good musicians and it's kind of how I ended up being in kind of the same kind of band, but that was when I was in high school, so it's definitely I wish I could I wish I still had some of the recordings. That would that would be pretty fun to listen what, to. What age was that again? Uh, I was sixteen, I think. Sixteen. Sixteen in my first band, yeah. <laughs> you probably learned a, a lot since Oh then. yeah, I've definitely learned a lot. <laughs> talk about the music scene in Atlanta. Go ahead and tell us about some of the bands that you're playing with now that you really look up to and some of the bands you just want to give shout outs to. Um, well definitely. Hard question for you, I bet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're going to forget somebody and they're going to be so <laughs> mad. Don't be mad, I know, guys. I know, I know way too many bands. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I'll give a shout out to everybody that's playing the, the hijacking South by Southwest showcase, which is uh, March 15th at Hole in the Wall in Austin. Uh, Today the Moon, Tomorrow the Sun, Stokeswood, uh, uh, Sneaky Hand, Jungle, um, uh, Gun Party. Gun Bra Party's here today in East Atlanta, so oh, video. Okay, okay yeah. cool, cool. Gun Party, Brain, uh, Cloud Eater, and I think that might be everybody, except for, I mean, and both my bands, but I'm not going to give a shout out to my bands. <laughs> They're going to be so mad. <laughs> but I think that, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, all those bands are amazing. I've, I've worked with all of them, and they're great performers, and yeah, it's going to be, I, I'm, I'm just so excited to have this showcase in, in Austin, so. It's gonna Good. Be uh, and of course, in every interview, I always ask this question, like, how do you feel about um, being part of a label versus, you know, doing things on your own? Like, how do you feel about just being an independent person? Um, and how do you think it could change you with being a label, or would you even take that step? Um, uh, definitely not a major label. I, I don't think I would ever. I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> um, at least not at this point in my career. And um, I, I think being independent is really, really important because, as a band, I mean, nowadays you can do everything yourself. You can record your own album, you can do your own press release, you can book your own tour. I mean, you can. You don't really need a label to get ahead anymore. So I, I'm definitely all about DIY. And I just want to, I, def, I want to keep doing that. I mean, as long as, uh, until I can't do it anymore, so, until I can't be DIY anymore and someone else has to take over. Um, other than that, yeah, definitely DIY is the way to go. What about um, selling your music? You know, where do you where do you see your profits as an independent musician? When, when do you think you're going to break even and actually make some money? Because I I don't think you're making that much money at this point. Oh no, no, definitely not at this point. But um, uh, I really when uh, when you go on tour, that's where you make the money. That's where you make money because uh, people will because you're on tour, people want to buy your merch. Um, because you're an out of town band and they're excited, they've, they've seen you for the first time, they want to buy everything that you have. So, um, definitely being on tour is really important for a band to actually make money. You can't make money playing Atlanta all the time. Maybe unless you're a cover band or something, but of if course. you're doing original music, then you can't you can't do that. <laughs> what about uh, giving your music away versus uh, paying for music? How, how do you guys feel about that? And, and First off, where can people get your music for each banner? Now go ahead and tell us your websites. Okay. Um, uh, you can check out Otis and you can listen to our music at enjoyotis.com. And uh, for Jack of Hearts, you can go to jack-of-hearts.net. That's a that, tricky one. <laughs> that's the Jack of Hearts. Say that again for them. Uh, jack-of-hearts.net. Dot net. <laughs> but, but you could also go to my website, sarahplaysdrums.com, and both both bands have, uh, are, um, their links are on my website, so you can go to that. Okay. But as far as um, giving away music and, um, I guess, pay, uh, paying or, what, what was the question? The qu question was, how do you, what is your opinion on giving your music away for free versus people paying for your music, and what are the advantages or disadvantages of that? Okay. 
I personally love giving away C uh, free CDs. Um, I would rather somebody pay, uh, get the CD than not get the CD because they didn't have enough money or, or whatever the case was. Um, one thing that Otis does is we take donations on CDs. So, you know, if someone, even, but so even if someone was like, oh, I don't have any money, I'm just like, all right, just take the CD anyway. Or, and we've had people that have donated $20 for a CD. Um, so donate, donations have really worked out really well. Um, and then, but I, yeah, I, I definitely, I, I love giving away uh, free music. Um, but you know, it, it definitely helps helps the band out if if the custom if uh, the fan can pay for a CD. I mean, that always helps. That's extra gas money. So okay, yeah. it's just a question I always ask pretty much. Every Tell me who are some of your influences growing up, and then uh, I want you to go ahead and after that, I want you to name some artists that we should check out. Okay. Um, on my influences growing up, um, I guess what made me want to start being a musician was Nirvana, Sub Sub uh, Sublime, um, that is so, that Chili Peppers, that you know, is so very unique. 90s. Like, <laughs> based on the style of music that you play, and make sure you guys check out her bands, Jack of Hearts and Otis. Like, That's not that, at all what is, my band sound like. No, absolutely <laughs> nothing. I would never guess that. But when I was 12, you know, I mean, that was like a huge influence on me. Um, but now, I love, I love all kinds of music. Um, Radiohead, of course. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age, Grizzly Bear. Um, Failure. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I can't. I don't know. I mean, I just there's just so much music that I that I love. So it's it's pretty much too much to name. Actually. Okay. Great. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and take a minute. We're gonna go ahead and, and go uh, watch you play. Okay. Okay. What I want you to do right now is go ahead and say goodbye to all your new fans that you may have here. Okay. Um, just say goodbye. Uh, see you later. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Here with Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here again. Sarah is one of our uh, winners of the Women of Indie uh, magazine issue coming out March 15th here. Make sure to check it out, sign up for Indie Music Review or magazine. Uh, Sarah is here to uh, play some drums for us here. Tell us about, about your kit here. You've got some uh, awfully crap, crappy cymbals here. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is strictly my practice kit. Um, so yeah, these are all cymbals that used to be sounding great, but I've cracked every single one of them. Uh, yeah, I love Pisces and Stavia. That, that, those are the symbols that I use. But, um, they but yeah. Like crap. Yeah, yeah, that's why I practice on them. Because <laughs> I'm trying to not do this to my current symbols. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and tell us about your uh, drum kit. What, what are you playing on today? Okay, well, I um, see it in every single show. Well, okay, every single show I play on this kit. This is my this is my baby. This is my D Drum Dio's kit. Uh, I just became endorsed by D Drum. So, um, yeah, the kit with the, the red and white sparkle stripes, that, that's the kit that I always play on. But uh, this is just, these are just my practice pieces right here, uh, my, my toms and my snare. Okay, but, so we hear some background noise. What, what's happening? Where are we at? Tell us about uh, it. We're at Thunderbox. This is a really popular uh, practice spot in Atlanta. Um, tons of bands play here. Uh, pretty much almost every band in Atlanta like practices here. So. Yeah, this is, yeah. yeah, it's a cool spot. I'm going to show them around the room here a little bit. Sarah told me it was pretty dirty, but whatever, you know. <laughs> this is a spot where uh, Jack of Hearts, yeah, Jack of Hearts. and also Otis, yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to have to censor some stuff on the wall here in a minute, okay? Okay, cool. But that's okay. That's okay. We can censor stuff. <laughs> We're allowed. We're allowed. <laughs> of course, this is my favorite part. This is definitely the, my favorite part. I'm sure the fans will love this the, the egg cartons? The egg carton. Oh, yeah. You gotta, gotta you gotta those. have it. You gotta have it. <laughs> the piano here, she told me they had to move it on yeah, their own here. That was very it's heavy. Up. They're a piano player. Wonderful piano player. <laughs> Actually everyone in all their bands are good. <laughs> but okay. So a few things here I'm gonna talk about your drum set here. Back back to what we're doing here. Down here at the bottom, you have this thing here. What is this? Um this is uh the Pahu International drum mat. Um I could move everything to show it to you, but but uh, yeah, this is an awesome drum mat. It, it keeps my kit drum from sliding, which happened to me a lot for the past couple years. And uh, it was really awesome. Um, I am endorsed by Bahu International. They, they make this drum mat, the, the Black Widow drum mat. 
So I highly recommend using it. And uh, if you're a drummer and your kick drum keeps sliding around, just use one of these. Your kick drum will stay in one spot forever if you wanted to. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. And on top of that endorsement, you just recently got endorsed by who? By uh, D Drum. And, and yeah, it's this uh, this particular kit right here. I'm just playing on this kick drum because I really like the way this kick drum sounds. But go ahead, uh, hit that kick for us. Yeah, D Drum. D Drum's awesome. But yeah, that that's uh, that was my other endorsement. I'm really proud about that one and really excited about that. I've been playing this kit for I think about two year, two or three years now. So so yeah, so it's pretty cool. Well, cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and get right to it here. We want to hear Sarah play. This is one of the reasons why we chose her as one of the women of indie here. Um, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll have it come back on. Say bye. She has many great bands practice here. We're going to go ahead and just let Sarah take it away here. Go ahead and do it, Sarah. Take goodbye. Bye.